Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video we'll be looking at timelines in C++, something that I've not seen in many other uh, resources, so it can be something quite difficult to get used to. Very useful, so that's what we're going to cover in this topic. So if you've been enjoying these, do consider subscribing. And of course, if you do subscribe well, already, I'll make sure that you go and click the small bell icon. Apparently that is really helping channels at the moment. So what we're going to do for our timeline, we're just going to make something move. I'm going to use the interactable class that we already have. Again, if you haven't been following along the entire playlist, this is part of a playlist uh, that will be linked below. If you have, I'm going to use the interactable base class. So open this in C++. If not, a standard actor with some kind of visual representation will be all you need for this. Okay, so in our interactable class, I just want to go to the header file first of all. I'll come up here. And just below the core minimal, uh, the main thing is that we don't have anything below the generated.h, but I'm just going to nest this below core minimal. I already know that we're obviously going to be using timelines, so I'm going to add the include for this, which is to include the components forward slash timeline component dot h. This just means that when we go below and start adding things, it will know the references that we're making. And I've not been able to find a forward declaration for this that works successfully, so I'm just going to add this in the header file as a standard include. Now the other thing we're going to need is just the actual curve, which will be the alpha offset which is being applied, and that's through a curve float. So we can actually forward declare this one just to save a little bit of time when compiling. And we'll do this with the class ucurve float. So this bit will make a bit more sense a bit later. We're going to add something very visual in the editor, and it's going to be of the, uh, the curve float type. So now we can go down and we can start declaring the things that we'll be using in our functions and the variables. So first of all, we're going to have a function in the public section, which I'll just call timeline progress, which will have a single argument of type float called value. And I'll just finish this off by giving it the u function. We don't need to add anything in here. So that will be fine as it is. Then in the protected section, I'm just going to add a few variables. Uh, the first one will be the curve timeline, which is of type F timeline. And then just below this, I'm going to add our curve float. So it's going to be U curve float with the pointer, and this will be just called curve float. And this one will give a U property of edit anywhere and just name the category timeline. Okay, so the final few things we want two F vectors, one called start location, one called end location. We'll give both of these empty U properties just so that they're handled by the garbage collection. And then we want a float, which I'll call Z offset. And this is going to be edit anywhere so that we can access this in blueprint with the category name of timeline. The Z offset is just going to be how high we're going to make the object float. So that is everything done in our header file. We can move over to our code file, start putting things in the constructor. Um, and before that, actually, just need to make sure that we actually implement our function. So I use the shortcut, create definition, and then we have our function ready to go. So in the code file, uh, if we just go to our begin play, and we're just going to set the variables that we want to assign to begin with. Uh, now the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a curve float assigned so the uh, representation of the curve that this will follow so we can do that by just a quick check so this is just our curve float variable that we made a moment ago we then want to assign the function our timeline progress function kind of like a delegate to the timeline itself so we want the f on timeline float and we'll call this one timeline progress and then we want to use the timeline progress that we've just created and do a bind u function. So that's going to want a reference of a class, which will be this. And it wants a name of the function we're going to bind to this, which is the timeline progress function that we can see just above that we created a moment ago. And then we can close that off and that is bound successfully. And we're just going to set up a few variables on the curve timeline itself as well. So the first one is going to be curve timeline dot add interp float, which is the float that we have and the timeline progress binding. Um, and this is showing an error at the moment just because we need to add the same library into the code file. So we can copy this from the header. We can just put this below the include, which we already have, and that should then go away. Okay, and I was just looking at that. It still wasn't going away after a while. Uh, I mistakenly called mine curve f timeline because of the f timeline there. 
uh, we can just remove that if you followed along exactly keep this name nice and tidy that should go away but that would have also had an error because we didn't have this include so we needed that anyway um, it was just showing at that time for a different reason now the other thing because we're going to have this bobbing up and down we want to make sure that this loops so the other thing we'll add is a curve timeline dot set looping true and then the next thing is we have our start and end location we just need to fill those again just very simply by saying the start and the end location is the get act location so this is just filling the start location to be the end location which is being set to be the current location that gives us the x and the y and the z that we need and then for the end location we're just going to update this afterwards just on the z to be the z offset that we give this so what i mean is we're just going to say end lock dot z plus equals z offset so that means that we can retain the x and the y values we can just manipulate the z value which is the only one we want to change going up and down by the offset that we give in the blueprint and then finally uh, as soon as we begin play we want to start the timeline playing so curve timeline dot play from start so the only other things we need to do this will be updated on tick so on tick we have our curve timeline and we just want to pass in the delta time so that's done by curve timeline dot tick timeline delta time that's our delta time that we're getting here which is a standard part of the tick function and this will act as our alpha and the very final thing is now that we have all of these variables ready to go in the timeline progress function that we've created we want to set a new location which is where the object will be moving so this will be an f vector new location and this will be equal to the fmath lerp which will be the start location where we want to start the end location where we want to go to and the current value which is being passed in and again value here is coming from the argument in the uh, the function call and then very finally we want to take this new location that we're setting and we will set this to be the actor's current location okay so it should be as simple as that uh, with all of that done we can hit the compile button and then we can go and test this in the editor one eternity later okay so this is taking a while to compile um, on the assumption this will just work i'm going to go back to the engine we've got another step we can do anyway so if we go back to our content uh, i'm going to put this in blueprints for lack of a better place to put it at the moment in the blueprints folder i'm going to go to the right click in the window go to misc and go and add a curve i'm going to add a curve of type curve float remember that's what we've been uh, exposing in c and i'm going to call this one the float curve uh, not as in float a point value as in floating up and down in the air and because whilst i've been recording this i've actually thought of the next video i want to do which is going to be a uh, squash and stretch curve i'm going to keep the naming convention to be curve and then the name of the thing which it is doing just so that if we have more of these we can have them named alphabetically as a type in the curve float we can come in here and if you're familiar this is very much representing now what we would do in a blueprint timeline so if i just go into any blueprint just a quick demonstration so normally if you want to add something uh, or animate something you'd add a timeline and then in here you can create a float and add different points of where you want this to animate around and that gives you a float track here which is going to be your alpha normally so our alpha is going to be our delta seconds from the tick but we do need the float curve the, uh, the kind of visual representation still and that's what we're doing with our float curve here so in here what we need to do is we can press shift and left click and this will give us a few points i want three points the first one i'm going to set to be a time of zero and a value of zero the second one i'll give a time of one so it's going to take one second to get to the apex uh, and a value of one which will be its maximum height and the final one i'm going to set this to be two seconds and give this a value of zero so this is back to where it was now the issue there is it was uh, somehow i placed a point exactly on one second so it wasn't allowing me to put this in the same place so now that i've put the final one to two i can set this to one second and we've got our curve now i'm going to grab these and just to ease this a little bit uh, drag select all of these right click on one of the points press auto and this will give you a nice soft curve we can hit save and this gives us something ready to plug in to our actor class as soon as this finishes compiling okay so the moment i press pause a second time there on the recording this has compiled successfully so i've got one build succeeded which is what we need so we can now go back into the engine we'll see if this has all been exposed in our interactable class so we can use the interactable blueprint 
uh, child class that we already have. And we can see here, we've got our timeline category. We can place the curve float that we've just added into that. And I'm gonna give this a Z offset. We'll say is something like make it rise 100 units in the air. So now if we come in and we should have a few of these interactable objects in the level, we can press play. And we can see we now have these floating over the timeline or using the timeline. Uh, we can still interact with them as always, but uh, we now just have them floating in space. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that's a nice use of our timelines. And apart from what we've exposed here, all of this is being driven, of course, in our C++ logic. And like I said, the main difference is that we're getting our, our alpha offset from the delta time on the tick event rather than the one that we're manually creating if you were using this in Blueprint using a timeline. So with that all working, I'll leave this video here for today. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. Uh, like I mentioned, if you haven't already, do consider subscribing. And if you have already, then please do remember to hit that grey bell notification. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.